Sports tied the set at 1-1. One one. Thank you so much. Yeah, 1-1, one one, they touched on it um, as well. Simple strategy going for those dragons, although I feel like it is not that simple as it seems. Okay, it is now at the end with those five dragons, but you got to get those team fights. you got to get the vision control. So what did they do right? It felt like an emergency strategy because they were they were sinking at the point because like, they were behind in the early to mid game. They couldn't really get anything done, but they, somehow they snuck one, one dragon, second dragon. So they, they kept sacrificing gains uh, other, way, other parts of the map, rather, and then just keep, kept going for the dragons. And yeah just bad pre preparation from Dignitas EU. I can understand maybe once or twice, but like three times in a row, they get caught around right before the dragon. It was kind of obvious at the end. I gotta also look at this team comp and nice. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> not obvious, the we're we're come on guys, not <laughs> come on. Um, no puns involved, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Serious the, here. The Tom Kench pick, I don't know, man. I don't it was know. Was 3-0, Dude, it alive. worked in lane. And some it didn't work in lane, <laughs> he lost his lane. <laughs> Like, the thing is, okay, he got a few early kills, good for him, he got very tanky, but you're just running around and you're so slow and, like, it, you need three stacks, so, like, the only time I think he, he got to eat play. Cedrion, <laughs> only time he got to eat Cedrion, he just flashed out, and it's like, that was it. So, they lacked engage in this composition yeah. here, because once you start falling behind to this first dragon, to the second dragon, we saw every single team fight with Sayo set back on the Azir, and Cedrion trying calling from the back as well, and trying to weave in where he could, like, dash in and get a bit of damage. And there was never any anything that could really connect and engage onto Sayo and Cedrion. So it was too easy for these damage dealers to do more than what the Victor could do, than what the uh, Korka could do, where they have to worry about the Rex that come in, Alistar coming in, and flank from Fizz. So the team fight simply just was so difficult to play because you have this fat Tom Kench running around. <laughs> oh and I, think, I also think because of how difficult it is to set Tom Kench up properly, that allowed Mouse to get more of those dragons because when the engages came up, it was so much more difficult for Diggy U to actually do anything with it. I also want to give some praise to Cedrian's Lucian. I like it so much more than his Corky. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's he has a bigger impact. To Fisher, you were praising some of his cullings throughout the course of the game. I actually feel like he's helping Mouse in team fights, much more than what I've seen him on Corky, where it's a lot more about Beansu and a lot more about Zayu. But Zayu also has been caught out two games in a row now where he's just been out of position, he's been singled out by Diggy U, and he's been taken out. He's got to be very cautious because if that keeps carrying on, he could be at risk of putting his team further behind. I, I kind of disagree there because I feel if you watch what he was doing there in the lane, on Lucian, he fell behind 20 CS to the Corky early. They didn't get anything done. It actually was Zayu. Always getting in the middle of these fights and just dividing the enemy team with, you know, that should be my shuffle, you know, Emperor's divide. And I feel that was the crucial part for Mouseports to start winning Thing these is, team fights. I that's the kind of the point. I feel he does even less on Corky than he does on Lucian. Sedrin is not particularly yeah. impressive as an Bottom anthem. line, boys, bottom line. And at girl. that time Kench and girl. <laughs> at that time Kench <laughs> been a Maokai pick. Things just had won the game. Like, come on, if you need a big tank in the top lane, you go Maokai. You don't go Tom Kench. I mean, We've screamed that here a couple of times. P just pick the Maokai or don't pick the Maokai. Um, let's, though, look at a couple of replays because all these things we can see in some of the replays that we've uh, checked out. One of those is actually a fight where Tom Kench's power is a little bit more clear. This come is on, an early game. Okay. Come on. I mean, so we basically took this replay to highlight that Tom Kench would get a kill. So it is engaged coming in. And first of all, look at Cedrion. His positioning in this fight here was very poor. He dashes into the Tom Kench. So now the three stacks onto him. Obviously eats him and just destroys him. So poor play there from Cedrin. And then we can see Wonderway using his ulti, which he did a few times to get past the towers. He used to zone them away to take down a tower with the big Tukorki, which was smart. But then also at the same time, I mean, it's just so difficult for him to stick to these targets here and provide provide reliable CC. To be fair, a lot of these fights, he would just simply there too late because he, at least on three different occasions, he arrived when the majority of his team was dead and he almost took out a target one against four one against five so i don't i don't believe that it is only purely because of the time Kench pick oh, because he not, did get ahead no, no, no. he did a lot of damage he could appeal i just think dignitas eu as a whole we're not prepared for things that were going to happen i mean you have a dragon timer six minutes every time you know it's going to come up so 130 you start setting up vision one minute defend the area you do you can even lose the tower in the side lanes just as you prevent that five dragon win condition and you play your fights out right because with a composition like you said lacks engaged what is it good at you have victor and you have Tom Kench, you, who can play in the front lines. You have a massive amount of zone control to keep people out of areas. Can't get in there as easily. But once you're in there and have the, you know, defending your flag, if you're playing capture the flag in, in that sense, like, it is <laughs> relatively easy with that composition. I just think DKU weren't playing to their strengths, especially not with the lead they had. As we don't see, like, a single player, single pick that's losing the game for either of the teams. Now we've seen two games. 
I feel more it's about opti optimizing what you're doing. And again, if you are playing into like, especially this new Azir, now that the, after some of the nerfs have come in, people are building Nash's Tooth into Rhylice. So you have a lot of control. And again, you have very, very good poke in these fights here where people always have to walk near your soldiers. You slow them down. And if it's very, very difficult to catch you, you need to lock in some sort of hard engage then if you want to deal with it. Unless you're playing this game where if you don't win the early game and you don't get to set up these sieges with the zone control, you simply cannot properly team fight. So you need a champion that could teleport behind the Azir and catch him out somehow. <laughs> if only that would exist. Yeah. <laughs> Go Maokai, get both guard and TP in behind him. Um, maybe as a final thing, you talked about optimizing your picks and then team fights. Let's look at the game-winning team fight, Dragon 5 again for Dignitas EU with the Lucian. And let's look at the positioning because we've been talking about is it a good game from him or not? And the Alistar engage. Beautiful. Yeah, just to take note, this is the second game we've gone to Aspect. Only four out of the previous 34 games have had Aspect of the Dragon. And I think both of these teams are tunneling this series exceptionally on that. I like the flank from Beansu, and despite connecting um, Chum the Waters, he's not tanky enough. Unlike the previous game where we saw Fizz going a bit uber tank, he wasn't able to commit. And yes, Sedrin ends up getting caught here, but the moment he comes out, flashes, peels for safety. But this is Dignitas EU overstepping their boundaries instead of just starting the dragon. They go too far forward and they step into Zayo's range. They can simply kite backwards because they have more area to play with. Do agree with the flank. If you are playing against like a zone control team, which both of these, these teams are, Beatsu's flank was crucial. Now Sedion is doing a good job spacing out here and then just walking and kiting, etc. But overall, just these teams are missing the one step, you know, the one counter to what, what the enemy are doing and then just the proactivity and the foresight of just how these fights should play out and they get, kind of get baited a bit too much. I'd like to see either a Nero or a Broken Shard actually step back and try to talk to their teams about changing some of the way they approach these dragon fights because like we said, 13 dragons um, have already, 12 dragons rather, have gone down in two games. No team is trying Baron Bates. No team's trying Deep Vision. We saw some Tom Kench ultimate flanks. <laughs> I use that term very loosely, but it, it's very linear, one-dimensional play from both squads. I think we need a composition that relies on sneaking a 20-minute Baron because it will go unnoticed in this series. <laughs> Just we did. We did. Hey, it worked for you well. I mean, portal <laughs> over from the backwards. And the coaches are sitting and watching the games yeah. as well. I mean, they can obviously write down notes and and they gotta look at also the items being bought here because pink wards is literally almost never being bought. One team doing that now. One team adapting. Start doing that, and yeah. you should see so much more vision control around these objectives. And you can start saying, "Don't we need to wait five dragons. Set up the Baron instead." Yeah, we'll see what the coaches can do and step in and mediate maybe the strategy. We're going to check in on Twitter, though, and see who you think is ready for the big leagues from at Lieblingsjunge. Oh, these are all my Lieblingsjunge. Uh, Mouse Sports, the players have improved a lot, and Inero is doing wonders. They're fighting as a team, not as solo queue players. Some of that really goes for that last game, and as you said, it's going to be now also a big test for the coaches we can't forget to I adapt. I actually kind of agree with that a little bit. I, You know, I been working with Stress and Pulse throughout summer on the the show and the Mouse Sports team transition from week one to now the finals is a very big one. They are constantly getting better. They are constantly taking small steps. And even if you just look at game one of this series, they saw, they seem kind of lost, kind of disconnected. DEU was able to take control for a very long portion. Now game two, they come in much more confident, much stronger. They get five dragons and they close the game out in 34 minutes. So it shows a little bit of a testament to their mindset. And I'd like to see if they can keep that up going to game three with some more vision control, with some other strategies, which we know they can do. In any case, Mouseport, they have uh, locked it up one to one, two games in with a spot on the LCS on the line. And the European Challenger Series continues right after this. Hey, my name is Wonderware. Wonderware. I'm top laner from Dignitas EU. Same. 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 Two now coming in with the Chum the Waters. He's actually going to flash back and allow both of his allies to be hit by that ultimate from Beansu. Nom down onto Sedrin. He finds him. Sedrin will have to flash away. Nisbeth's dropping low. Pubic, pubic. Nice. Nice. We can fight, we can fight, we can fight, 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 fight. Obvious, 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 obvious. I need help, need help, need help. Get one away, get one away, get one away, one away, one away. Miles will be taking game two in this best of five up against Team Dignitas EU to even up this series to one to one.